My family is happy that my great uncle has late stage cancer and are already planning how to spend his money, but they don't know he removed everyone from his will except for me. Posted by you slash Shujan Godark. For background, I, 24M, live a very different life than the majority of my family. I didn't graduate high school but got a GED and started working as a welder and hunting guide. The rest of my family is pretty successful, for instance, my father is a lawyer, my mom used to be an RN, my brothers own companies, and my sister married a lawyer. I'm glad my family found success, but they can be very shallow and often put me down for what I do for work. My mom will make comments like, when are you going to school to get a real job, or things like that. They didn't want to pay for welding school, so I worked at an auto shop to pay my own way through. They often go on vacations and cruises without me because I won't be able to appreciate the culture or food and other nonsense like that. I love them, but I have been slowly pulling away from them over the last few years since I can tell that we live different lives and they have no interest in sharing theirs with me. Now, my grandfather's brother, Mike, and I have always been pretty close. Mike and I used to go hunting when I was young, and even though Mike also worked in law, he and I shared a love of the outdoors and nature. About a year ago, Mike was diagnosed with cancer and has quickly gone downhill in the last few months. I have taken a lot of time off work to care for him since he is my oldest relative, and no one else wants to take care of a frail, sick old man for some callous reason. His wife died 15 years ago, and he doesn't have any children. He recently asked me if taking care of him was hurting me financially, and I told him that I was cutting back on hours at work, but I loved him more than any of my other family members, so it was my pleasure to take care of him. The next time I visited him, he revealed that he was having his will changed and would be willing his hunting cabin, it's not really a cabin, it's a small single family home with power and running water on 70 plus acres, to me, along with about $100,000 to get it fixed up and start your life. He wants the rest of his estate to be liquidated and donated to different causes he was passionate about. Mike is actively dying now. He asked to be taken out of hospice so he can die at home with his dog, who will also be coming with me when he passes away. In his own home, my family was talking about how much money Mike has and how, when he dies, they want to convert his hunting cabin into a summer vacation home and fund a big memorial trip to Europe on his dime since we are his last remaining family, and they expect the majority of his wealth to be divided among us. They do not know that everything is being donated and that I am getting the house and some of his money. I know that if and when they find out about what Mike has so graciously done for me, they will tear me down and curse his name. I don't want to be around for the fallout. I plan to set aside some money for renovating the house for full-time use and start a small welding company someday. So, would I be wrong if I cut them out of my life as soon as Mike is gone? Seeing this new greedy side of them has soured me a lot, and I don't know if I can even stand being around them anymore, even though I know that Mike always said your family should be everything to you. First update 4 months later. I figured I might as well provide an update to my original post, so here it is. Mike passed away shortly after my last post. He died peacefully in his sleep. His last waking hours were spent with me, Maisie, and the nurse who was caring for him. He is buried next to his late wife. He lived a good life. Some of his last words to me were, we had a pretty good run, didn't we? The issue with the will was hilarious to me and served as a great pain reliever. Mike is always looking after me, even after his death, because watching the fallout in real time was like chicken soup for my grieving soul. Yes, Mike did leave the cabin and money to me. He also left me his guns, his dog and her belongings, his fishing poles and tackle, and a few mementos from over the years. He changed the will three years ago and simply never told me or anyone else in the family. He left various trinkets for other members of our family that were pretty on the nose. For instance, he left my father, who spent a long time complaining about the contractors doing work on the house, a bag of old hand tools. My sister got a box of wine glasses. One of my brothers got a drawer full of pens and pencils for your blossoming legal career. He also gave all of us some money for a round of beer in his honor. Watching everyone go from fake sadness to excitement, to horror and disgust was quite the trip. My mom kicked the pot of flowers outside the office so hard that she tipped it over. My father just stared out the window in silence for a really long time. My oldest brother held it together until we made it home, then started screaming and swearing about getting an effing box of pencils as a thank you for being part of his life. I have been moved from the disappointment son list to the crap list. As some of you noted, they weren't exactly angry about the cabin and the money Mike left me, but more so about his larger assets that were being liquidated and donated. That drove them completely insane. The main target of their anger was the primary organization that Mike willed the rest of his estate to, and other than an initial outburst and some snide comments, they seemed to take it in stride. I haven't spoken to them much since Mike's passing and the will issue. There are still matters that need to be worked out, and I was told it could take up to a year. The cabin has been locked up, and I've set up some cameras and a gate alarm. I'm moving in slowly, alternating between here and my apartment until my lease is up. It's definitely dated, and I'm currently working through renovations and repairs. Because my phone number is tied to my work, I didn't want to change it, so I opted to block everyone except my mother, in case something really bad happened. After a few days of her complaining and questioning why Mike left me something so nice, she quieted down. Last week, my mom began calling and texting me, claiming it was an emergency. I spoke with her on the phone, and, unsurprisingly, it was not an emergency. 
They want me to donate the cabin and land to my sister since she's thinking about starting a family and wants to raise her future children holistically. I told my mom that my sister and her husband have a double income and a lovely house in a completely different state from me, and if they wanted to move to the country, they were fully capable of doing so. However, I would not be giving them my land. She then suggested they buy it from me for $200,000, which is far, far less than it is worth. I said no. I got everything from being called a selfish prick to threats that if I don't support my sister's dreams of raising her kids in the countryside, I'll be dead to her. They even said Mike would want me to give the cabin and land over, and they told me, see if we ever do anything for you again, you entitled prick. I feel like hearing those things should have been harder, but it just feels like they're trying to pressure me into giving up what my great uncle willed to me, which made me angry rather than sad. My sister also got on the phone to cry and say it was her and her husband's dream to raise their kids specifically on Mike's land. I did feel bad saying no to her at that moment, but in hindsight, she's never mentioned this before, so maybe it's a new development. Since then, they've been contacting me through email, social media, and other means, hounding me to let my sister have or buy the cabin and land. So, despite my best efforts, the people of Reddit were right once again, I should have gone completely no contact. I've deleted my social media accounts, and since I've moved job locations, they don't know where I'm currently working. However, they do know where my house is. Sometime while I was at work, my mom and sister drove over, knocked on the doors, tried to open the side door, and looked in the windows. On my doorbell camera, my mother very clearly tells my sister not to touch anything so he can't sue. I'm thinking of putting up a locking gate, right now it latches but doesn't lock. Everyone is now blocked, and I'm putting together a list of people who need to be notified of a phone number change since I want to change my number. I'm not really sure how to go about keeping them from walking onto my property. About two weeks ago, when I returned to my apartment, my parents were both waiting for me to confront me about how devastated my sister is that her future children won't have the experience of growing up in the country. I'm kind of afraid that they might camp out at the property until I give in. I've put up no trespassing signs, and I hope that's enough. I know one of my brothers drove by a while back because he sent me a picture of the road my house is on. Other than that, I am well, Maisie is well, and Mike is laughing from the grave. I'll stick around a little longer here, and then I'll be logging out of this account permanently.